This is the last session of CO1. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, here we are again. This is uh, Connecting Online for 2014, our last day, our last session. And Janet, even though we have a post, uh, for those uh, who don't know, we have a post CO14 tomorrow. Andrew's uh, class is ready. I shared it in the um, conference area. And that's for tomorrow. So hello, Janet. You look lovely. All right. So we're going to get started. We're in Italy. We didn't get to Australia, but we'll get there tomorrow, an hour before this, whatever hour it happens to be in your area. So we're in Italy, and I hope Janet's going to tell us a bit more about where she is and everything else. So when I think of Janet, I think of color. And it's very appropriate that you're wearing something very colorful. That's perfect. Um, and Janet and I have been connected, I think, since 2009 with a Moodle, no, not a Moodle, but a an Evo session uh, called, I have no idea what it's called. I don't know if you remember, uh, with a few other presenters. Yeah, right. Very strange name. Yes. <laughs> Ah, Ning. So Janet was uh, just at the beginning of her, um, I don't know what to call it, your route, your journey into uh, the online presentations. So that was then, and, and Janet is now very confident, and I'm really happy about that. So take it over, and I'll mute my mic.
recognized me, but you have no idea. And what I did was I put lots of um, words associated with the word, and I couldn't really quite guess what the word referred to. So I don't know if um, you like to do this kind of thing, but you can have a little look at the ears and just shake your head and try and guess. Job. Yes, thank you for my interest. You keep chick chick chickens and chickens. Yes. In fact, um, I'm sitting in a little bit of a noisy angle at the moment because I don't know if you can hear the very loud purring of Simon, but Samantha is coming out and just refused to move from my chair and is right beside me here. So, uh, <laughs> yes, they play a big part in what I do on this particular occasion. So, um, get to the student. Obviously, the next thing is that you can have them make their own um, say the word that you see in the room by themselves, which is what you're going to do in this particular case. Hi, uh, I think you should be coming to the licensing chicken. <laughs> well, I do indeed, but not my own chicken. <laughs> no, but I do. Uh, I also see that you do teach dance. So anyway, that, that's what we do. And then at the end of um, the class, I ask you to choose a shape. Say the word shape. And then the word And that's all. So that's lovely to hear.
A lot of discussion, and it was great fun. Again, they did a few times more than the panel, so yes, we can. And I think it's really good. So, try it.
they deserve. Idiot, grammar, and these are all students by one of them. Can you see which one I would have created? All the other three of them can be created by my own. Folios. <laughs> my my ju journey. Thank you very much, Nelly, and thank you for this opportunity. Before I begin, can everybody hear me? Can you all hear me? If you could uh, put Chuck's, yes, okay. That's fantastic. Well, I'm delighted to be here, and lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for attending. So, this evening, it's 11 o'clock here in Abruzzo. It's quite late, but I'm uh, excited about being here. So, hopefully, I'll be showing you some tips and tricks how to visually inspire your learners. Um, I am a, vis a visual type of learner myself, so I guess that's why I sort of teach in, in this style. And what I like doing is taking my own pictures to use with my learners. And obviously, I try to encourage my learners to do the same. I'm going to show you quite a few activities that you can do if you use is so let's let's begin and check okay I think change okay here we go <laughs> sorry about that okay so images um, before I sort of show you some of the activities, what do images mean for you? How do images inspire you? If you'd like to type sort of in the chat box anything that you can think of, how do you get inspired by images or what inspires you? Impact. Don't worry, Isabella, no problem. Colors, surprise, thank you. Lots of nice ideas. Help you to memorize. Exactly, yes. Images are very sort of good for uh, memorization purposes and as visual aids and so on. Exactly. Okay. So, images, um, they inspire, they um, concentration, yes, Isabella. So they refresh vocabulary support, they engage students. And they move you in various ways. So motivation, activation of concepts, teaching. They transport you to a different place, perhaps, 
and they liberate you in, in some ways. And this is an image of little Tibet, which we have in Abruzzo, and my husband's motorbike here. And um, so you can be transported to a different sort of area. OK. What I'm going to be doing is showing you a few visual icebreakers, introductions, and activities that I've actually used with my own classes, uh, and uh, show you some tools that I use uh, instead of images. And these are some of the ideas that we'll be looking at um, in the next half hour or so. So, I'd like to show you a tool and it's a very nice word cloud creation tool. And I use this a lot for lots of different projects. This is one that I do as a, as a warm-up, as an introduction to myself. A tuxedo, you can actually upload a picture of yourself. And uh, I don't know if you recognize me, but this is me here. And what I did was I put lots of um, words associated with me and my students had to guess what these words referred to. So I don't know if um, you'd like to just have a look at some of these ideas inside my head and try and guess what they referred to uh, in my life. Some of them are very obvious. <laughs> my job, yes, thank you, my interest. You teach chicken. Kittens and chickens, yes. In fact, um, I'm sitting at a bit of an awkward angle at this very moment because I don't know if you can hear the very loud purring behind me, but Samantha, one of my cats, just refused to move from my chair. She's right behind me here. So, uh, <laughs> yes, they play a big part uh, in my life. Okay, so um, get your students to, to guess ideas. And then obviously the next thing is that you want them to create their own uh, taxator word cloud with uh, ideas about themselves for students to guess. Okay, uh, I did this activity. I like eating chickens. <laughs> well, I do eat chickens, but not my own chickens. <laughs> Never. Uh, I asked my students to each around the class give one adjective which they felt um, sort of, uh, captured them themselves. And I quickly typed it up into Taxeda, which I had open uh, on the computer in front of the class. And so each student gave me an adjective to describe themselves. For example, imaginative, honest, beautiful. One student said he was lazy, and I said, really lazy? Um, are you sure? I want you to think of a positive adjective. And he said, that is positive. <laughs> so anyway, that, that stayed here. And then at the end of... Um, Sort of brainstorming around the class, I asked them to choose a shape because tuxedo is nice. Uh, there are so many different shapes, and then they chose the image of Joy, and that was nice because one of the students, her name was Joy, so that was a lovely souvenir of, of not only her but of the class. And then this was uploaded onto the class blog that I had set up for them. And it was just a nice sort of brainstorming and, and introductory activity, which uh, they enjoyed. Uh, it was memorable, in a way, the adjectives that, that came up. OK, uh, another introduction activity that I like uh, doing is gathering some pictures of myself and adding them onto a blogster, blogster.com, which is an interactive poster. And this shows you my life in Abruzzo and what it consists of, <laughs> mostly. Oh, hi, Marisol. <laughs> Thank you. Mostly um, sort of uh, concentrated around my garden. And I show them example of, of my own life. And then, of course, I invite students to create their own posters if they like on Glogster and invite students to ask each other questions and sort of uh, ask what they like doing, something about their life. There you go. Yes, nature plays a very important part. Uh, so, okay. 
Thank you very much, Maria. Elisabetta. Glockster, yes, um, Marisol, Glockster is an interactive poster, glockster.com. And if you, and here we have um, a screenshot of a lot of the Glocksters that I've created. You can use them for projects, for describing a book, for describing your holiday, for uh, promoting um, a conference, uh, for promoting anything that you like. And um, you like Glocks, Stella, that's, that's great. <laughs> And um, here you can see um, I, I created um, a, a story, um, the one on the second on left, um, a dramatic love story. So to promote it, I, I put lots of the characters and I added um, podcasts, uh, introduction to the story. So it's just a nice little uh, promotion or publication that I did and so on. So, um, blogster.com and use it for your production online, works fantastically, um, but also I use these productions myself, face-to-face -face classes, so various products. Is it similar to Pinterest? Uh, I don't think so, because Blogster is just like one poster, whereas Pinterest you can pin lots of different um, ideas and links and so on. But I suppose, yes, with Glockster, you can have um, uh, podcasts on them, audio. Is everything okay? And embed anything, really. So, um, very specific. Uh, Jan yeah, Janet. Uh, yes. Okay. Oops, next you well. <laughs> yes, definitely. Right. Now, this I heard you all the, the time. The it didn't stop on this end. No. Yeah, if it would, I would. I would uh, say hello. No, everything's fine. Bombs. Any idea you'd like to put in the chat box? Have I um, which city this could represent? And I think if you've been to this city in the world, you would probably know it. Okay. So no. you'd like to write down? Think no. This coat of arms comes from. Seconds, and the clue is in. Is that okay? In the and if you add two words that you see together, it will give you a very famous city. Well, which slide are we talking about? Because I see slide number twenty. That's correct. It was nineteen, yes. and That's now the meaning with uh, the motto. with devolver. Do you know which city this refers to? Do you want me to go to the next one? Spain. It's not in Spain. Spain. I'll give you a clue. It's in England. And another clue oh. is I come from this city. I just did. I it's number 20 now. Padlet. An introduction activity all the time when I'm teaching okay. in Oxford. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, Oops. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I've given the game away. Would you away. say that... What? <laughs> uh, I just said... What, what are you seeing, Janet? Are you seeing maybe, maybe things you can't see the whiteboard? Is that it? Crossing a ford. Okay, so I um, get my students to guess what it is. Then we discuss uh, what the coat of arms represents and pictures and so on. Oh, okay, we're on 20, though. Okay. Thank you. And then everybody sees 20, but you. To asking my students <laughs> okay. to uh, create no their own coat of arms. And um, I asked them to uh, draw four pictures that represent themselves, or three pictures, or, or divide. Yeah, we can all see 20. At least that's what uh, they're saying in the uh, chat box. Okay. So, yes, everybody's okay with they 20. Share their coats of arms. Mm -hmm. So, these are four different students' okay. coats of arms that I've put into a collage. And they share and have to question each other, ask each other about the pictures, what do they represent, why would that, is that coat of arms, and it, it generates a lot of discussion, and it's a lot of Okay, fun. we've got support students here. students say to me, oh, That's but I can't okay. draw, um, but honestly, it's amazing, they, they can draw in the end, and these were from students who said they couldn't do anything, but they're quite amazing, and um, you know, they, they draw their family life, their hobbies, and so on, and then discuss in pairs. And then what you do is you can put them around the class, and it's just a nice way of remembering, uh, you know, 
facts about students, especially at the very beginning of a course. And it's one of my favorite activities and using images um, that I took, the coat of arms I showed you of Oxford. I just simply took that um, as I was passing by and that's my, my, my prompt. And then students uh, just draw their own images. So that's, that's, that's what I did. Okay. Um, hi, Ade, nice to join us. Another interactivity, I mean, this isn't exactly an image, but it's, it's a nice visual um, sort of image, I suppose. Uh, I use text to mind map, which my map is cool. Um, what I do is I ask um, students in, in groups from wherever they're from to brainstorm um, stereotypes or ideas from their country. So I actually had five nationalities in this class from Poland, Russia, Turkey, Japan, and Spain. And these are the words that they themselves um, sort of use to describe um, things about their country and so on. So for Spain, uh, flamenco came up, bulls, beaches, Sagrada Familia, paella, and, and Gaudi, and, and, and so on. And again, sort of these words, people asked each other questions, found out more about, for example, Poland, Lech Walesa, why, you know, did he represent so much for, for Polish people, and so on. And again, this was put onto the class blog, and a nice visual reminder from where they came from. And uh, it's an enjoyable activity. Uh, uh, any questions before I start? And as you can see, the Padlet, if you do, please, please write them in the chat box and uh, I hope I'll be able to answer them as as after. Okay. So, moving on now. Um, and again, another nice activity is when you're, you're, you're sort of um, meeting class for the first time, is to ask yeah. students. Yeah, we're on 21. On and invite your students. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it's not just our England, but also your countries. Uh, invite them to draw images of what they think uh, British people are like. And this was done by the Pink Room class at the Lake School of English, where I teach occasionally. Uh, two to three times a year. I used to work um, for over 20 years. And they came up with some, some nice, interesting images, mostly the pub and not good food. One of them wrote, uh, I think he was from uh, Italy, and so on. So again, each student uh, individualized the, the, the picture, the image, and then uh, students were invited to share their pictures and to discuss why uh, they thought, um, you know, these stereotypes um, are what they, they are. English pizza is lousy. I have to agree with that. <laughs> you can't be Italian. <laughs> pizza. So, so it engendered a lot of discussion and it was great fun. Again, they said, but we can't draw um, Janet. I said, oh, yes, you can. And I think these pictures are pretty good. Um, indeed. So just try it with, 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 with your students and get them to communicate um, about stereotypes, especially if you're doing that topic in your class. Okay, um, I'd like to show you um, a site called Muzi, and I like using it a lot, um, in particular because it has different apps that can be used uh, to exploit with your students. One of the apps that I like is the Collage Creating app, and I've used that a few times to get pictures together, and it just generates beautiful collages without you having to do any work at all, and then you just embed the collage of three to five to six pictures to whatever project you are working. Um, you see on the bottom right, um, Versus app it's called, where you can upload two pictures to create um, uh, not to uh, work. No. opposites. So uh, in this particular ideas. lesson, I was doing pros and cons of life in the city yes. and life in the countryside. So I uploaded a picture of Oxford on the left-hand side and a picture of where I live on the right-hand side in the book. So 
and that generated a good discussion or you know, sort of an introduction to uh, you know life in the country and so on. And I did a presentation on Musi and um, this visual sort of tool. Uh, and there's a link uh, on the slideshow on the presentation when you later. <laughs> Pardon me. Blogs, online multimedia posters with text, photos, videos, graphic sounds, drawings, data, etc., and more. Yes. It's fantastic. Okay. Uh, I use comics and cartoons a lot, and students um, seem to like them because they're memorable, visually appealing, and you can use them in all sorts of things. I use them for phrasal verbs, uh, for idioms, for grammar. Um, topics and these are all on my students bar one of them can you see which one I would have created all the other three of them have been created by my, my students can you guess which one I, I created for myself as, as an example the last one no no that was one of my students in fact, it's the top left hand. That's the one that I use as an example. Can you make out Janet's writing? The verb to make out. And um, you see uh, the verb take after, the verb chill out, and then, well, the bottom right was for adjectives, prepositions. So again, I show them my examples and then I get them on the computers to create their own. And this is writecomics.com, which is uh, a nice, easy comic creation site. It's free and within seconds, create a comic, add it, keep uh, copies there. That's how the students work. Okay. <laughs> Um, photofunnier.com is cool. photo editing, image editing site, which I actually think is my favorite. And what I've done here is I've uploaded comic from Right Comics uh, onto a um, um, sort of headline app and fun with prepositions. So that was my introduction to the topic of studying prepositions and then um, got the students to create their own headlines and comics with prepositions in them for fun and that was quite fun. Okay, now um, I haven't actually taken these images but it's um, a subcomic creating site which is free and I like using to, with my students at tundu, tundu.com and I created these um, in particular weekend talking about the weekend I have classes every weekend on a Monday morning I like to spend maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes on that dirt road discussing what students did and this is something I did as, as um, prompts. Did, um, for example, did you see red this weekend? Did you chill out this weekend? Did you have a lion? So again, students create their own uh, comics. Cradle what we studied in the past. Uh, collected. Or reference. Like these yes. questions yes. led yes. students asking and answering. Um, I, I opened the front door and So, with the Pink Room class, which um, I taught last year, um, what I did for the weekend um, on a Monday morning is I asked each student in the class, there were about 40 of them. To just say, just say one thing or, or one word about their weekend. So one student said shopping, one student went to the beach, one said um, 
Victoria, Buckingham Palace, squirrels, um, sleepless, fab hues, windy, etc., all representing things that happened um, when they went out or went away for the weekend. Um, so this represents that group's weekend, and um, then I asked them to choose the shape um, for just one shape, which would represent the whole group's weekend. And they chose the squirrel shape because the class had gone to a place where they saw squirrels and they were fascinated by these squirrels. And so that was quite a nice way to sum up uh, their weekend. And it was a visual souvenir, perhaps, of what you've done. And then they were able to expand and sort of explain why they'd chosen these particular words. St. James Park, probably, yes, yes. In fact, did it, does it say St. James Park? No, but Park was, was part of it. Um, and they've gone to London, gone to Victoria Station, and Buckingham Palace and so on. And uh, they had a really fantastic time. And this tuxedo was, was nice to keep um, as, as a record of their weekend. And uh, it's something which, which you can do as well uh, with your students. Okay, again, um, the visual prompts. Um, if you have a look at the picture on the left, um, I use this uh, to introduce a reading. And I was in England, and this was big news, very big news that particular day. And so in the morning, very quickly, I, I created this, this word cloud uh, of this cherub. And some of the words, you can see baby, William, Alexander, Louis, favorite. And I asked the students to predict what this was about. Any ideas? What was the big news of the day? And who the person is? It's perhaps quite obvious, uh, the one on the left. I'd like to write down. This was an introduction to the royal baby. Yes, exactly. To um, baby George. And so all the newspapers were full of, of his birth. So I thought that would be a nice little quick warmer activity. Guess, uh, predict what the text is going to be about. And then they actually read the text. And uh, that was just a little leading to, to that. On the right hand side, I used this tuxedo with my class. Um, it's which famous person do you think this could be? All these adjectives came from the students before I actually gave them um, the article from the daily paper uh, connected to this particular very famous person. Um, but I asked them to give me an adjective to describe, I'll give you a clue, her. Not Winston Churchill, but <laughs> and somebody who passed away. I think a couple of years last year. Not the Queen. Nope. She was very obstinate, very strong, very proud. Not the Queen Mother. And my students actually used the word divisive. This 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 lady was a bit divisive. She was powerful. They said she was patriotic. Not the Queen Mother. Very sharp, uncompromising. Thatcher. Thank you, Maria. Hi, nice to see you here. Yes, Margaret Thatcher. So um, they all, my students all knew that Margaret Thatcher had passed away. It had been in the news. Um, and so I thought, well, OK, let's do a quick tag of um, what they thought about her. OK. Oh, thank you, Susan. <laughs> You're engaged with the slides. That's very kind of you to say so. I thought, OK, before they read the, the article from, from the, the paper, um, let's, let's see what they know about Margaret Thatcher. And then let's compare with adjectives. Um, which came up in the article, and quite a lot of these adjectives did come up. Uh, opinionated, um, that was quite a nice word, um, and so on, that, that, that cropped up. And so it was eye-catching. I chose the shape of Great Britain, because Margaret Thatcher represented, I suppose, Great Britain. The shape of the cherub, which is the baby. So, in fact, um, with Tuxedo, you can do so many things, um, as, I, as I showed you before, with the joy that happened to be the name of a student, um, with the squirrel that happened to represent um, the weekend for my students. And um, it, this, you know, it, it's, it's a nice tool. 
but they do do it. Yes, Wordle is also one of my favorite word uh, clouds. Um, it's also fantastic. I, I love using it. Okay, um, I'm going to show you here some screenshots of Google there. You may know the next image. Some of you might know it. If you don't, well, it's free and it's very, very easy. You don't have to register. Uh, you actually choose the character, um, choose your background, and then you just simply type in either soliloquy, dialogues, and then you press create, and it gives you an, an embed code, so you can actually embed a moving movie on your blog or wiki, and um, it gives you a link. Then we can you frozen or not it must have been the snow there but we could still hear you and then i get my students to create um their their own little dialogues and these are all from my students um the ones that they've created and we were doing um phrasal verbs and um idioms uh see for example and um, I, I, I created uh, a blog for teachers that I was teaching, and they actually did some nice Devil Their movies, which um, there's a link. Yes, we'll take you through. Um, Janet, you everything's good. Later. I hope you can hear me. Oh, thank you, Susan. Everything is good, I think. Uh, yes. And as I said, Devil There is, is a very nice. Like lots of projects, lots of grammar. Everything's fine, right? Uh, okay. Hello. Yes. Janet? Um, Janet, are you still there? Well, I'm sure you are, but uh, we can't hear you right now. Hello, I see Antonio's here. Antonio, okay, all right. So, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Wait, hello, hello, hello. Yes, we hear you, Janet. Yes, we hear you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, sorry, I, I switched off the video because I lost um, a connection. I think the bandwidth issues. Yeah. Sorry about that. So, try to carry on. Um, okay. Get the desktop. Hello. No, can you hear me now? Uh, it's it was a dark and stormy night. Okay, I don't know what happened. Oh yes, okay. And then the internet went off. Okay. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. You couldn't do it any better. Okay. Um, have I clicked the video? Um, by mistake, it says resume. Uh, hopefully not. Okay, it says resume at the bottom. I clicked something. Hopefully that doesn't affect anything. Sorry about that. Um, it sort of seemed to free. Just ended up being a very can't seem to change the slides for some reason. Okay, and then the next slide I think Lily. I'm clicking, but nothing's happening. Can anybody see any slides moving? Shame. Okay, I'll have to do that next time. Okay. I'll do that. Um, oh. Okay, so yes, I can. Um, yes, I can. Yes, please. Yes, please. I don't know what's happened, but I can't seem to um, click on them. I hope to see you all again. Would you be able to click so for me? Twenty. Padlet. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going <laughs> to. Pretend that I can see them, and then if I could ask you to move it to the next one, um, because I have uh, okay. Sorry about the problem, and I can't see twenty lines. No, nope. no problem. Everything is great. No problem. I'm just yes, I can see the whiteboard. Know, I, can I, see I slide keep thinking 19, which you live in there. such an isolated uh, place. Uh, where 20. are the people? Um, how do you get around? Do you have a helicopter or? How do you manage? Sure, yeah, but me. Okay. Susan, what well, that? what I could do is I could carry on, but it's a shame if, if the pictures don't. Can you see on your recording slide 20? Oh. 
Okay. Yeah, if we say 20. Okay. So what I'll do is I will, because um, I've got the pictures in front of me, on, <laughs> I prepared a, a handout for myself. So if it's on 20, I'll, I'll talk uh, my way through them. I could ask you to move it, Nelly, for me, if that's okay. Um, I wouldn't be able to do that myself. Amazing, amazing. Uh, this has been an incredible presentation as far as I'm concerned. I have I have learned so much. Uh, I can't wait to try it. I've been playing around with, with a lot of them while you were talking, by the way, on my other computer, listening to you and practicing um, some okay. of these uh, amazing tools. I don't know about the others. Anybody else that's been playing around while Janet was talking using the tools? Well, what I'll do, Nelly, if it's okay, is I'll carry on. Someone's trying to call um, me. Uh, Nina's trying to call me, actually. My, my, my sheet. So, if everybody can see slides. Any questions? We've got. <laughs> I see okay. it's been extended. Um, I'll, I'll We've got a little bit of time here. If I can't see it, as long as everybody can see, if you can move them for me, Nelly, What is it great. near? Um, so, what you can see here is Padlet, padlet.com. And uh, what I do is I ask students. Okay. Um, uh, to recycle words that I've taught them. Mm, okay. uh, I asked them to go to imagechef.com, which is an image editing site, and to create a little image Amazing. Add, a, add a word. Sh Amazing. You must be so healthy. You must be, yeah, that was the thing. You must be so healthy to be living in a place like that. My goodness. Uh, no pollution, I presume. Then what I did was I, I added all there is onto um padlet which is um, like a wall where you can add uh images videos uh, links to documents and so on and then all that is on one page so all the new words that you've taught them that they've learned or that they want to remember is on a really nice visually appealing sort of like a, a poster and it's memorable and if you click well, on the link, well, thank you. I want to thank you, and I think everybody else okay, will share uh, the claps here for doing an amazing, amazing presentation uh, for CO14. And I'm looking forward to your chapter. We've got one chapter here in CO12, so um, another chapter for it would be great. Um, thank you, everyone. Please continue. Um, Thomas has added. Um, it, it's, these are all there we go. Chef, um, words that, that had uh, cropped up whilst they were in. Yeah, in we the really do need to thank okay, Wizard IQ for, for being to, up. I think it's probably um, five o'clock in the morning there. Um, That's okay. So, there, let's continue, Janet. Go into that link that Tom can has you added. Tell me if you can see uh, that and that's the, um, the yes. conference area. And you're invited to uh, you. join Thank the Moodle Moot. So we've got lots of, uh, we've got a presentation every single okay, so day in the month of um, February. And if you're interested in learning to Moodle, you're welcome to join us. Com. Com. Okay. And what I so I think do Janice is frozen, I but our session's over. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, this uh, is this the end was, of the um, conference. And I want to thank you for being so around special and, and uh, for joining us to the very live. end and a sign that is amazing <laughs> thank you thank you that there's the chat there did you copy the chat if you want to copy the chat by the way there's copy chat you can take that away with you and uh, the links are all there plus the conversations so thank you everyone there's Anything a real clap. With, with, with around the city. Bye for now. And Thank you. Send them to See you tomorrow. We've got Andrew tomorrow for the post. Uh, the Andrew at 4 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. Andrew and for the um, how interested and post they were CO14 to, to, Australia. To he, um, Janet, you're included. invited to watch Andrew tomorrow as well. So bye for now. For their own images. And then it sort of widened out a bit that I asked them to find images. Um, which which highlight phrasal verbs or idioms and stuff.